In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to design round columns, also columns that are dominated by moment. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a concrete crazy! We are designing a circular column that has 5,000 PSI, axial load of 200 kips, moment of 300 kip feet, a maximum shear of 45 kips, and the in internal cover, so one and a half inches for our cover. Now, the very first thing we're going to do is get this information from our structural analysis. That could be a program, that could be hand calcs, whatever you do, however you want to get your, your information, then you need to get it. Now, we start out estimating the size of the column by using our axial load, which is 200 kips. So, 200 kips is about what we're going to say is what our area needs to be in square inches. If you don't know where it comes from, there's a previous video that explains this super cool trick. So the area of a column is pi d squared over four. My diameter would therefore square root of four a over pi. That would be plug in here and get 15.96. I'm gonna use 16 inches as the first guess for the diameter of my column. Now I have to solve for my, what my gamma is. This is the center to center dimension between my steel and this is the total diameter of my column. So solving for this would be 16 would be at my height, minus two covers, minus two stirrups, minus a half a number 11 bar on one side, and a half a number 11 bar on the other side. I'm assuming a number 11. All that divided by H, I get a gamma of 0.66. Now what I gotta do is find my Y value on my non-dimensional interaction diagram. I plug in here and get one. I find my X value, I plug in here and I get 1.1. And now I get to go to the interaction diagram. So you have to search through the interaction diagrams and find the one that best fits for you. But this one has five KSI concrete. It has a gamma of 0.6. We calculated a gamma of 0.66, so this is conservative. This is great, everything is awesome. I come in here with my Y value of about one, and I come in with my X value of also about one, and oh no. Oh no, I'm off the chart. I'm like not on the chart anymore. I'm like, there's no more values for it. Oh no, that means I'm wrong. My guess was wrong. Don't worry, there's another way to do this. So we're off the charts, like way off the charts. This isn't gonna work. So what we're gonna use this other trick I showed you. When you have moment dominated columns, you set them equal to about 0.5. If this doesn't work for you, you could use 0.4 or 0.3, but we're gonna use 0.5 in this case. And we're going to back solve for knowing what the area gross that we need in terms of D squared and set all of this equal to D cubed equals this big monster. And then let's plug in the numbers. The numbers are here. Once I solve this, I get 20.9 inches and I can round this to 20 inches. I always round to even numbers when it comes to columns. When I plug in for my gamma, and this is just the way I solved it before, I'm getting using a number 11 bar, I get 0.73. And guess what? This is still conservative. My gamma before was 0.6, so using 0.73 is gonna be okay. I plug in for my PU over AG, and I get 0.64. I get my MU over AGD, I get 0.57. Let's go to that non-dimensional interaction diagram. My Y value was about 0.64. I come over to my X value, which was about 0.57-ish or so. And um, I'm gonna get a point that's about here. Now that point, I can see and then read off what row that I need. Now this value right here is 5% and this value is 4%. So I find that I need uh, about 4.2, 4.3. I think I'm gonna use 4.2% for my row. 4.2%, that multiplied by the area of my column gives me 12.6 inches squared. Now I gotta figure out what bars I wanna use. I wanna use six though. And using six bars would need that I would need number four, 14. So I wouldn't have to use six. I could use something else if I needed to, but I just wanted to use six. So I did. That's 13.5 inches squared, which is larger than 12.6. Cha-ching, that's good. But now I gotta check my gamma. I'm using a larger size bar here than I had before. I do my gamma calculation and I get 0.72, but which is greater than 0.6. It's still conservative. It's still okay. Everything is great. So now I have figured out that my six number 14s are gonna work. Let's go on to our spiral design. Now the first step here is I'm gonna calculate what my V sub C is. And then to do that, I need my D. So here is my D, 17.1 inches. That's just my H minus um, um, my cover minus um, 
one half of my longitudinal bar and I get 17.1 inches. I plug into this equation here and I get 48.5 kips. Now I'm going to first calculate and compare that to my V sub N so my or my V sub U. So my 48 kips was greater than my V sub U um, but less than two V sub U, therefore I need case D and I can get away with AV minimum. So for my S, I need either D over two, which is 8.6, 24, 16 times the diameter of my longitudinal bars, 48 times the diameter of my ties or my least dimension of my member. And out of all these, 8.6 is gonna control. So I would use eight inches. My AV minimum, if I calculate that here, I need 0.15 inches squared and I'm providing 0.2 inches squared. So I am good there. So in a non-earthquake zone, I would be finished, but let's look at these earthquakes. When you're in an earthquake zone, you have to provide additional confinement. You have to satisfy this equation. Here I plugged in my area gross and my core, and I've solved and figured out my rho sub s is 0.014. Using my volume of my stirrup divided my volume of my concrete and solving for my s, I can plug into this equation here and find out that I need 3.36 inches, or three inches is conservative for earthquakes. That's what I would use for earthquakes, three inches of tie spacing or spiral spacing and eight inches if I'm in a non-earthquake zone. I get away with six, six number 14 bars and there is my cover and 20 inches. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and of course, leave me comments. I love hearing about your comments. Take care, everybody. Bye.